Welcome to the VTU e Sectiona program, e-learning center. So in this video, we are going to continue the module number 5 of artificial neural network. So the continuation of the previous topic, we are going to see uh, principles of competitive learning. As we now formally state that the working principle of this competitive learning within a given sequence of stochastic vectors which have been given over there from a possible unknown distributions. So, each patterns of x is going to be compared with a set of initially randomized weight vectors. So, which is going to be uh, taken in the value of v j. So, j where j is going to be 1 is equal to 1 to m values and the vector w j which best matches the x k value which is to be updated to a match the x k more closely. So, to implement the competitive learning formally requires a similarity measure to implement the process of competition and a learning law in accordance with which a winning neurons will be updated. So, as we know about this with the requirements as we have come across over there with the requirements of this particular architecture a competitive learning network. So, a local learning algorithm uses the information availability only at the snaps in question such as pre and post cinematic signals or pre and post cinematic activations. So, with the help of that activations, we are going to see about the three cluster of vectors. So, this figure portrays about the three cluster of vectors which has been uh, discussed in the previous video and which is going to be initially randomized code vectors in the top figure. So, gradually which moves under influence of the competitive learning rule to approximate the centroids of this cluster as shown in the lower figure. So, the competitive learning scheme uses the code book vectors to approximate the centroid of the data clusters. So, with the help of that we are going to study about the next topic the inner product and edulian distance based competitions. Let me discuss about the inner product versus edulian distance based competition. There are two ways in which the best matching code vector can be found. The first way is to employ an inner product criterion for the input vector which is going to be presented or selected a code book vector by choosing the neuron in the competitive layer which receives the maximum activation. Okay. So, the two ways of this which is going to be taken from the best matching code book vector. The first way is to employ an inner product criteria for the input vector which is going to be presented selecting a code book vector by choosing the neuron in the competitive layer that receives the maximum activation. So, this means that for the current input vector x of k, we compute all neuron activities. So, the inner product which is going to be taken as y of j is equal to max of x k transpose with j w j. So, the winning neuron index j satisfies this condition over here, the winning neuron satisfies the condition over here, understand. So, alternatively one might select the winner based on the elidian distance measure. So, the here the distance is going to be measured between the present input and the code book vector, the present input is nothing but x of k and the code boot vector which is going to be taken as w j. <coughs> Based on that it is going to be get measured. So, the distance is going to be measured in between the particular present input of x of x k 
and the code book vector W j. And the winner neuron index j which is going to satisfy the condition, the, edi the, the Edgleian distance based competition which is going to satisfy this condition over here. Understand? So, with the help of that the two sides of the same coin we are going to get into the next topic the two sides of the same coin. If I am going to take a coin it have two sides such a way we are going to have this particular parameter into two different aspects. It is misleading to think that this method of selecting the winning neuron are entirely distinct. To see this we have to assume that the weight uni or uni neuron property which holds for a weight vectors. <coughs> Sorry. So, we are going to <coughs> Sorry. So, to see this we are assuming that the weight uni, uni norm property which holds for all weight vectors. So, we are going to take the weight vectors of this values and which is going to suppress which is going to provide the particular information as we show ahead this you can norm the, uh, the, the uni norm property can be ensured by direct design of the learning scheme which is going to be employed to update the winning neuron weights. So, that we now revoke the particular condition we can rework the particular condition in the above equation with this particular value which can be equation can be followed as this x k minus w j square is equal to minimum of that particular value and it is going to be get made into the separation of this data transfers and the same data when produced like that and which may be tends to like this. So, finally, we are going to yield the expression which is going to be provide that x k transfers w j is equal to max of x k t w j value which is an identical to the criterion given in the above equation. So, the neuron j wins if it gets vector correlates maximally with the impinging input. So, that in this case of ART 1 F 2 neuron we have seen that such a binary choice network requires neurally excitatory self feedback. So, lateral inhibition and a faster than linear signal function. So, that the computer simulations we simply choose the neuron index with maximum activity or minimum distance. So, as per the case of ART1 F2 neuron the binary choice network requires only the neural excitatory self feedback as well the lateral inhibition and a faster than linear signal function. So, that it will be easy for us to take the computer simulations. The simulations which is going to be provided from the computer we can choose the neuron index with a particular maximum activity or a minimum distance. Such a way we are going to generalize this particular principle into this law which is going to be dealt about the competitive learning law, a generalized competitive learning law. This competitive learning law which requires the weight vector to the winning neuron to be made to correlate more than with the weight vectors, understand. So, this competitive learning law requires the weight vector of the winning neuron be made to correlate more with the input vector understand. So, winning neurons are going to be correlate more than with the input neuron or input vectors. So, this is done by preparation of only the winning weight vectors. So, that is going to be taken as W j that is going to be taken as W j where this W j can be identified with W 1 j comma W 2 j etcetera up to W n j. Okay, such a value is going to be taken over there. We are going to take this value with a transverse, we are going to take a transverse of that one. 
towards this input vector we are going to done the value winning vector value. So, the scalar implementation of this linear law in difference which is going to be a form which is going to be formed in a present value how it is going to be taken into consideration that is going to be taken into w i j to the power of k plus 1 is equal to the terminology is going to get specialized to find this. So, in such a way we are going to make that one. So, in a general one may rewrite this equation for all the neurons as the field has been mentioned like this. Here we are going to take that i is equal to either 1 to n. Once j small j is equal to j for this condition, when w i j to the power of k alone has been taken over there during the time i is equal to 1 to n where j is not equal to the capital J. Where the capital J is nothing but average maximum yield which have been given by y j of k. Okay. With this idea in hand we now slowly we can study a four important neural network models that have been uh, their foundation in the competitive learning understand. So, we are going to study about the four important neural network models for their foundation in the competitive learning. Let me start the first one as vector quantization revisited, vector quantization revisited. Okay. So, the vector quantization simply we are going to call it as an V q, simply we will call it as an V q, which is the vector quantization which is an important application of a competitive learning which was originally developed for the information compression application. And now it is routinely employed to store and transmit the speech or vision data is also going to be taken audio as well as video data is also going to be get stored and transmit which is going to be get present in this vector quantization process. So, in this important application of this as I said the information comp compression application that is going to be the main important thing which have been present over here which have been originally developed for this particular compression application information is going to be get compressed that compression application is going to be get used over there. <coughs> so, in this V q in this vector quantization the code book vector w i are required to be placed into a signal space in a way that minimizes the average expected quantization error. To minimize that error we are going to have the equation error e is equal to we are going to take the integral part of this x value and the w value code vector value which is going to provide the particular process. So, where x is going to be a signal vector it is going to be subset of signal vector it is worth emphasizing that the winning code vector w j is a function of the input as well as all code book vectors as we have mentioned about that w i j is equal to 1 to n. Okay. So, which is going to be present as like that. So, the vector quantization algorithm exploits input vector structure to divide the input space into different regions. The algorithm exploits the input vector structure and dividing that into an input space into different regions, different regions going to be get provide that which will ultimately be identified as a cluster areas or classes or decision regions like that we can make that one. It is a cluster or a particular class or a particular decision regions. So, the compression is then achieved by identifying the signal vector in a particular region of the input space by a code book vector. So, then all these vectors that fall within a particular region are represented by a code book vector for that particular region. Then the name vector quantization is going to be get present. So, that we are going to call it as a vector quantization understand such a way it is going to get present over there. Let me see 
an example for this. So, this is a particular example. So, this quantizer effectively divides the input data in the data space into polyhedral regions, which is going to be called as tessellation, okay, which is going to be called as tessellations. As shown in this particular figure, if you are going to see about that, a different regions are going to be get segregated over here, which consisting of small data set in the particular margins. So, the boundaries of the cells are constructed from a particular bisector plans of lines joining the code book vector, the lines joining the code book vector. So, this quantizer produce a minimum encoding distortion, a minimum encoding distortion for a set of given code book vectors, for a set of given code book vectors. So, if you are going to take about this particular diagram, this testulation for 20 randomly generated Gaussian distributed points are going to be get used with the MATLAB command. So, from a classification point of view, this diagram depicts the classification regions and formed using the nearest neighbor classification rule. 1 i n n. So, we are going to say that 1 n n is going to be a nearest neighbor classification rule. With the help of that, we are going to do that one. So, the bin specified by the G code book vector W j is simply the set of points in this particular value, in the particular quantizer whose nearest neighbor for all the w i is going to be using saying a edulian distance measure, which is going to be get used over there. So, if you can see about that, the particular classification region that are going to be formed using the one nearest neighbor classification rule and the bin specified by a code book vector is going to be simply the set of points in the particular value, whose nearest neighbors of all w j is going to be a small w j will become capital W j as a Dillian distance measure. Understand? So, with this help we are going to move on to a unsupervised vector quantization, unsupervised vector quantization. So, it is easy to implement the vector quantization using a competitive neural network. In the simplest unsupervised form of algorithm, if there are q input output pairs of x k comma y k of a data that needs to be clustered, that needs to be clustered, they are concatenated into vectors. We have to concatenate that into vectors. So, that I am going to take that z of k is equal to z of k is equal to z of k is equal to x k. We are going to take this x k value which is going to be concatenated with y k. So, the z k is going to be concatenating the x and y k value and this x is having a pair of data, y is also having a pair of data. If there are q input output pairs as like this x k and y k of the data that need to be get clustered, they are concatenated into the vector as z k is equal to x k concatenation of y k x k concatenation of y k and then employed into an auto associative vector quantization learning process. Okay? Auto associative vector quantization learning process, which have been shown over here. So, this figure typically a neural network architecture that can be implemented a vector quantization learning. Here, 
the cluster neurons compete for activation from concatenated input parameters of this z k. So, which is going to be taking this concatenation of this values x and y and which is going to be choosing a value over there and that is going to get present. So, we are going to have this particular data. This is going to be called as an unsupervised vector quantization. Move on to this unsupervised vector quantization. The unsupervised vector quantization system compares the current sample vector z k with the c quantized, c quantized vectors weight vectors. So, here the weight vectors w j at a time instant of k is going to be get considered over there. Okay. So, that is why we are going to take that one which is going to be considered only w j of k which is going to be considered only at time instant of k we are going to consider. Understand? And the neuron j wins based on a standard Edelian distance competition. Hence, we are going to have this expression is going to be dealt like this. The expression is going to be dealt like this, where the discrete time index k has been introduced over there. The discrete time index k has been introduced because the weight vector will change in accordance with a competitive learning law, which is going to be based on the competitive learning law. Hence, we are going to introduce this k, the index k has been introduced in the weight vector, understood. So, this learning which is going to make some more things, the winning neuron j learns the input pattern in accordance with the standard competitive learning in the vector form. So, the vector form can be represented as w j of k plus 1 is equal to w j of k plus it is going to take this value, it is going to consider this value of this particular z of k minus w j k of. So, that the learning of coefficient should decrease gradually towards 0. For example, we could use the form which may be uh, used in this form, the example we can make use of this form. So, 1 minus k by 2 k for initial learning rate of n naught, it is going to be taken into n naught and a q. The q is nothing but training samples, initial learning rate and training samples are being selected. Initial rate for that we are going to consider that 1 minus k by 2 k. This would make the initial learning rate decrease linearly from 1 1 0 to 0 over 2 q iterations which is going to reduce from 1 1 0 1 1 0 to 0 1 1 2 1 1 0 to 0 over a yeah, 2 k iterations okay, 2 q iterations. So, that the winning vector w i learns the losing vector do not learn as the point out competitive quantizing vector converge the exponentially quickly to pattern the class centroids. And in the equilibrium the average quantization vector e of w j uh, which may be represented with the jth centroid such a way we are going to represent that one over here. So, that we are going to scale the data components as the proper practice we scale the components of the data samples the z of k. So, that all features have equal weight in the distance measure. So, this scaling can be embedded within the uh, what I can say a distance computations. Okay. So, which is going to be a data dependent scaling matrix which is going to be called as a data dependent scaling matrix which is going to be computed from the maximum and minimum feature values which is going to be considered in a each dimensions. Okay. So, the scaling can be embedded within the distance computations of the data dependent scaling matrix 
computed from the maximum and minimum value in the each dimensions. Okay. So, this normalized Edelian distance calculation ensures that no one variable dominates the choice of the winner. So, that this Edelian distance decides or calculates and ensures the particular thing that dominance is going to be get removed off, it is going to be get avoided. So, no one variable dominates the choice of this particular winner, no domination will be present over there. In other words, we can say that no future dominance and the classifications is going to be a future scale invariant. So, a future scale invariant is going to be provided over there, so that no future dominance and the classifications are going to be get made over there. Such a way, we are going to derive that one. So, scale data sample such that all features have equal weights in the distance measure and which ensures that no one variable dominates the choice of the winner. So, with embedding within the distance computations, we can get the expression as w j of k minus z k transfers omega w j k minus z k is equal to minimum of that value. Here, the omega is nothing but a matrix which is going to be dealt as like this. This matrix is going to be get processed into this particular omega value. Such a way, the scaling the data components are going to be get satisfying its rule and it is going to avoid the domination of the choice of winners. Let me see how this is going to be get summarized okay, with the help of a operational summary. This MATLAB simulation which is going to give an example of an AVQ, this simulation example generates the clusters of a three dimensional data set which comprising 20, 200 uh, data points actually 200 data points using an adaptive vector quantization. The principle which is going to be used over there is nothing but adaptive vector quantization. So, this simulation with the help of 200 data points adopting the vector quantization, adaptive vector quantization. So, the points generated are randomly and normally distributed, which are going to be randomly and normally distributed. So, 100 data points each about centers with coordinates of 0, 0, 0 and 1, 2, 1, 2, 3 which is going to be present with a standard deviation of 0 0.8, 0 0.8, understand? So, the point generated are randomly and normally distributed, so that 100 data points of each centers with coordinates 0, 0, 0 and 1, 2, 3 with a standard deviation of 0 0.8, so that the data scatter can be study very clearly and the two clusters are nearly visible, such a way we have been come across over there. So, that the AVG algorithm extracts the centroid of this data cluster. So, let me see how it has been present over there. So, the operation summary which gives that concatenating the input data where z k, we have taken that z of k is equal to concatenation of x and y data which preposed for a normalization and scaling, which is going to be get preposed for the normalization and scaling. And the, we are going to initialize the number of clusters C to be get generated, quantization vectors for all the classes or clusters to select the random samples of this particular sample data which we have been highlighted or assigned already. From that it is going to make a learning rate schedule, it is going to fix a learning rate schedule which is going to be normally taken as 0 0.1 and it decides the maximum number of iterations which is going to be dealt as q or 2q. As we are already uh, studied that it is it is going to take the data to compromise from 110 to 0 with the help of 2q iterations, 2q iterations. So, that the twice of the q value iterations are going to be get fixed over there. 
and we are going to deal a k value that is nothing but iteration index k also going to be get initialized as 0. With the help of that it is going to start its iteration. So, the iteration which is going to pick a data sample, it is going to pick a data sample is z k the concatenation of x of k and y of k data from a random sequencer which is going to select the data from the random sequencer and which finds the winning neuron index j which is going to find the winning neuron index j with the help of the expression which have been mentioned over there. And later it updates the winning neuron, it is going to later it updates the winning neuron synapses with the help of this expression and also it has update the learning rate. The learning rate has been mentioned over there with the help of this expression it is going to get update that while k is equal to or greater than 0. Such a way it is going to get present over it is going to repeat the process until it satisfies the condition. So, the clustering layer was assumed to compromise two neurons with in star weight initialized to 3 comma 0 comma 0 and minus 2 comma 3 comma 5 respectively as indicated in the figure which have been come across over there. Clearly, we have come across over there correct. So, that figure I am going to show once again to you. So, this is going to be the figure which have been present over there. Understand it is a simulation result of this unsupervised vector quantization algorithm applied to a three dimensional data set which compromise which comprising the 200 data points scattered into two clusters. So, this is going to be the actual thing which have been present over there. So, the learning rate was assumed to follow a linearly decreasing function where q is equal to 200 a single pass through the training, uh, training set data in the in star weight trajectories and the final points as denoted by the circle which is going to be present here. Notice that manner in which the weight vector with a minimum value of 0 comma minus 0 0.01 comma minus 0 0.02 and 0 0.8, 1 and 8.3 tends to approximate the cluster centroids. So, this is going to be the final weights which have been present over there in this particular regions. So, the operational procedure can be get explained with the help of this particular cluster. So, as a MATLAB simulation example for this we are going to see about that cluster a three dimensional data set comprising a 200 data points using adaptive vector quantization process and the data point generated to be randomly and normally distributed as I said already and 100 data points each about the centers with the coordinates of 0, 0, 0 and 1, 2, 3 with a standard deviation of 0.8. And the cluster field as assumed to be compromised the two neurons with in star weight initialized to be 3, 0, 0 and minus 2, 3, 5 respectively with the help of that we have been calculating this value is not it. So, that this learning rate was assumed to be followed linearly decreasing the function. So, a single pass through this training set results in the in star weight traje uh, tra uh, trajectories and final point as denoted by the circle which have been mentioned over there with the help of the weight matrix of 0 comma minus 0 0.1 comma minus 0 0.2 and 0 0.81 and 8.3 sorry 0 0.8 1.8 and 3 which tends to approximate their cluster centroids. So, with the help of this we are going to study about the MATLAB code for this particular thing. It is a program for an AQR clustering m clustering in n dimensions m clusters in n dimensions. So, we are going to initialize m is equal to 2 that is nothing but generating the 2 clusters we are going to generate the 
two clusters over there and we are going to open the data file. We are going to open the data file and we are going to pad this file and we are going to close the data file. And we have to specify the dimensions, dimension n and number of data q, n comma q and which is going to be present with it within its size and we have to initialize the weight matrix w as we mentioned 3 comma minus 2, 0 comma 3, 0 comma 5. We are going to initialize the vector matrix and we want to plot the cluster so that we are going to ask for figure plot the cluster. So, we are going to have the plot 3 clusters part 1, part 2 and part 3 and with the grid also going to be needed over there which has to hold an axis of minus 2 comma 4, minus 2 comma 5, minus 2 comma 5. Understand such a order we need it over there and we are going to get each data point, we are going to get each data point. So, for i is equal to 1 is to q and we are resetting the minimum distance index as minus 1. So, minimum index is going to be reset over there and we are going to set the uh, minimum distance variable to a larger number so that we are going to take that minimum distance is equal to 1000 and we need to uh, check whether distance uh, to each code book, how the distance between the code books. So, for j is equal to 1 to m, distance is equal to 0, for k 1 is to n and for the distance we have to calculate the distance we are going to take distance is equal to distance plus part of k comma i minus w k of j to the power 2. With the help of that we are going to find the square value of this particular distance and we are going to fix the minimum distance and index both are going to be get calculated over there. Once it is going to be done it has to be get update the learning rate, we have to update the learning rate. So, learning rate has to be get updated so that we are going to calculate this value as 1 minus i by 2 into q. As well we have to update the winning vector, winning weight vector. So, that we are going to take that for k is equal to 1 is to n and we are going to specify that particular thing. So, that like that it is going to goes on with the additional code goes here for the weight storage. If its weight storage is going to be get more over it has to goes on over there as well as the code can be continued for the plotting also for additional code which goes here to be plotting which are the plottings are needed over there we, we can extend the code. Such a way data is going to be read back into the matrix path, one column and three row per data point. In this example, our data scatter is going to be in three dimension. So, the dimension n and the number of patterns q are computed for this path. So, the main loop runs once through the data set after resetting the minimum index and minimum distance. As already we have been come across over there, the minimum index and minimum distance. It will reset and it will go for the next plot. So, that the main loop runs once through the data set after resetting the minimum index and minimum distance. So, the winning code book index is going to be computed and its weights are updated. Once weights are updated, the code book vector are stored in the arrays. So, that we can get the continuous black line to produce the weight space strategies. Uh, so, that it works through that code segment to figure it out and write our own code to store the weight for values at each iterations and which is going to generate the particular uh, similar uh, lines which is going to be get measured over there as shown in this particular figure. So, it is going to be get creating such a way, understand? So, it will be very much helpful for us to do such kind of thing with the help of this MATLAB code. Let me continue the next topic supervised vector quantization, supervised vector quantization. Uh, Cohen suggested using a supervised version of vector quantization which is going to be called as learning vector quantization LVQ1. LVQ1, learning vector quantization 1. 
where the data classes are going to be defined in this v as uh, lvq1 the data classes are defined in advance and each data sample is going to be labeled with its class so that in this learning vector quantization each neuron is going to be assumed to present a class c and the weight update procedure for the winning neuron j and other neurons which is going to be taken j is not equal to capital j is can be get modified as follows which can be get modified as follows so how we are going to be given over there which is going to be get follows so the suggested which is you are going to be suggested by the cohen which using a supervised version of vector quantization so the learning vector quantization lvq1 with the help of that the data classes are going to be defined in advance and each data sample is going to be labeled with its scale as which have been shown over there as w i j to the power of k plus 1 is equal to two conditions are going to be applied one is going to be a set and one is going to be a subset not equal to so this is a condition finally we are going to observe in this so when we are going to see about the practical aspects of this learning vector quantization one if i is equal to 1 to n where we are going to take this learning rate the learning rate may be greater than 0 or less than 1 may be greater than 0 or less than 1 which is going to be a learning rate that is made to decrease the monotonically with the successive iterations so it is usually recommended that the particular learning rate to be kept always small maybe as small as 0 0.1 or 0 0.15 usually we are going to keep this as small as 0 0.1 in a limited uh, training set the vector may be applied uh, clinically to the system as the learning rate is made to decrease linearly to 0 linearly to 0 so that the vector in a limited training set may be applied clinically to the system as made to be decreased to be 0 note that the sup the supervised version of this vector quantization equation is going to be similar to unsupervised vector quantization but with the difference that if vectors are misclassified then the corresponding weight vectors are moved away from the present input to reduce the possible of misclassification rather than leaving them unchanged rather than leaving them unchanged so that here we have to initialize so cohen suggested that one should keep an equal number of codebook vectors per class with ultimately leads an optional optimization of the class boundaries so that initialization of codebook vectors may be done to an actual sample of each classes so initialization of the code vector may be done to actual sample of each classes finally since we know that the neural network have a tendency to over learn it becomes necessary to define the number of iterations in advance so the defining the number of iterations is going to be there in advance so the number of iterations might be anything from vary from or 50 to 200 times the number of codebook vectors selected for this representations however there is no substitute for experience in selection of suitable simulation parameters so we can't be able to go for any kind of substitutions for experience in selection of the suitable simulation parameters understand as we come across about this practical aspects so the Cohen suggested using a supervised version of vector quantization which is going to be called as a learning vector quantization where the data classes are defined in advance 
and each data sample is going to be labeled within its class. So, that in the learning vector quantization, each neuron is going to be assumed to represent a class and which is going to be get update the weight update procedure has been given over there to update the winning neuron J and which is going to be specified in practical aspects as like that it has to be decreases monotonically with the successive iterations. It is usually recommended that always we have to keep the learning rate to be kept small as small as 0.1 value. So, that in a limited training set the vector may be applied clinically to the system to make or uh, decreases linearly to 0. So, that the supervised version V q or the vector quantization equation is similar to the unsupervised vector quantization understand. Hence, the Cohen has suggested. So, prior to that we have seen about the difference between this supervised vector quantization and unsupervised vector quantization is going to be only the vectors are misclassified. Then the corresponding weight vectors are going to be moving away from the present input to reduce possibility of the misclassifications rather than leaving them to unchanged. So, that Cohen suggested that one should keep an equal number of codebook vectors per classes, which ultimately leads to an optimal up, um, up, um, up approximation for this particular class boundaries. So, by initializing the codebook vector may be done to actual sample of each classes. So, finally, we are getting that neural network have a tendency to overlearn it becomes necessary to define the particular samples it define the particular samples over there. The number of iterations has to be get identified or defined in advance. So, the number of iterations might be anything from 50 to 20 or 200 times the number of code by vectors can be selected more representative. So, sim in generally we are going to say that one iteration might be a vary between any values. For an example, I am going to keep that the iteration might be vary between 50 to 200 times the number of code book vectors selected for the representations. Understand? So, as per Cohen suggested, the equal number of codebook vectors per class or ultimately leads to an optimal up approximation of this class boundaries. We have to take this learning rate value may vary between 0 to 1 and we have to always keep this value as, as small as 0.1 and we are going to define this iterations level in advance and with the number of iterations might be anything. But for sample, we are going to take 50 to 200 times the number of codebook vectors are going to be get selected for the representations. However, we are aware about that no substitutions are going to be get experienced in the selection for the suitable simulation parameters. So, with the help of this, we are going to continue the operational summary for this learning vector quantization in the next video. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you.